Hey guys, in this first lesson, we're going to look at the animator component, as this is what's going to control everything that we're going to be doing for our character. It's the component that's responsible for handling the animations for our character, for handling which avatar is assigned to our character, and a few other settings that are going to be very important for animating our characters. So we're going to look at what an actual character avatar is and then go over a few of the settings of the animator component. And we're going to do this from a brand new project. So I'm going to create a new Unity project using the latest version available to me, which is 2019.2 uh, beta 10. So let's create a new project using this. And I'm going to say humanoid animation course. And we're going to use 3D. It looks good to me there, so create a new project. So for the most part throughout this course, we're going to be using the Unity provided character controllers that we can find if we go to the asset store. And if you don't have this layout, make sure you go up to layout and go down to default. So you get the default layout. So we're all working in the same workspace here. And I'm gonna search for standard assets. It's completely free and has all of the things that Unity provides for us, but what we care about for this case is going to be the 3D character controller, as that comes with a completely rigged character that will allow us to play with animations and check out how we work with animations in Unity. Now to keep this simple, I'm simply going to import everything, but for this, all you need is the character folder, but I'm just gonna grab everything all at once here. All right, so I have these standard assets imported. I don't want this sample scenes folder that it imported for me though. I know I don't care about all of that stuff in there. All I care about with this is going to be our models folder inside of characters, third person, models, and we have Ethan in here, which is gonna be the model we play with for the first bit of this. And then by the end of it, we're going to get some third party models and we're going to do some cool animations and share it between different models and retarget it based on different avatars and all kinds of fun stuff. So for now though, we're gonna look at the Ethan model. What I'm gonna do is I wanna drag this guy out into my scene here and just place him out in the world. And with him selected, if I hit the F key, I will center him. And also just to make this look more like a scene, I'm gonna add a floor. So I wanna create a cube and I'm just going to scale this out just like that. And then just bring it down under our guy there. So now with our Ethan selected, now this is just a rigged model. There are no things on this model at the moment that help it move, even though it has an animator component, which we'll get to here in a second. You can go to prefabs and grab a third person character controller, which already has, you know, a physics based character controller on it that you can move around in your game worlds. But we're not doing that. We don't care about all that. We're just looking at animations and how we can use them on our characters and especially how we can use them on multiple characters and decide when certain animations are played and all this fun stuff. So with Ethan selected, I notice we have an animator component here that has a controller field, which has nothing on it because we do not have an animator controller created and configured for this, which we will get to in a bit. And then we have an avatar field, which has an Ethan avatar asset already applied to it. So with this selected, if I were to select my avatar here, it will show me this is a physical asset in my assets folder. And if I select this, I can see in the inspector, I have a configure avatar button. Now this is gonna take me to a different scene. So if you need to save your scene, go ahead and do that. Now, there appears to be a lot going on here, but all this really is, is the system that Unity uses to understand which bones apply to which body parts. That way, if we were to use the same avatar on multiple different rigs or different rigs on one avatar, it understands which bones should be moving and animated based on the motions because we have it set up and assigned. And Unity is really good at doing this automatically. But as long as you have this set up well and correctly, you should have no problems retargeting animations and using the same animation across multiple uh, rigs as long as they are using a valid avatar, or at least in this case, the same avatar. Now, if we go down to done here, it will take us out of the scene for this. And what I'm gonna do is go back and select my Ethan here 
frame you up again. We have apply root motion, which is going to allow the animation to physically move the character in 3D space using what's called root motion. Now there's a lot going on here that has to happen for this to work. If an animation has movement in the form of a vector and it is physically moved in space, this will allow the animation to actually move your object in space. And we will be using this for our animations because the animations can look a lot more realistic if they are actually in control of moving the character. It helps you avoid the skiing effect where you're sliding across the ground where it doesn't look like you're actually walking as well as jumping is done really easily this way because the actual animation handles the physical position of your object in the game world. The same goes for if you were to do dodge rolls or evades or anything like that. This is all handled where it's moved based on the animation so it looks really good and it's really easy to do as long as you have proper animations. And then we have update mode, which is going to determine if the animation should update on the physics time step. So as the physics simulation updates every uh, 50 times per second, in fact, this will do the same. Or if you should be not on scaled time, which means the scale time would say is set to one, you're going to be running at the normal rate. If I set it to unscaled time, this is not going to matter what the normal rate is. So if I were to set my time scale to zero, which is something you would typically do if you were to stop the simulation of your game or pause the actual game, this animation would still run even if you had done that. But typically we're going to be just using normal for this. And culling mode will determine if the object's renderer is off screen, so it's not in view of the camera or any camera, what should be happening. In this case, we are only going to be doing the basic animations so that we can get events fired back to us if we cared about those, and that doesn't happen all that much anyway. Or you could say always animate, so the actual thing is always evaluating, always animating, and we'll see what that does later whenever we have conditional branches in our state machine. But that would be something that we would typically leave on update transforms being cold because if it's off screen, we don't necessarily care if our character is animating properly. We just care that it still understands what is happening. And the last one is cull completely, which means nothing happens once it's off screen. And that could be good for some things if you have a lot of statically animated objects. So in the next lesson, we're going to look at the actual state machine, which is going to use an animator controller asset to work. So what I'm going to do is create one of those really quick here. We have a few from the assets that we imported. But what I'm going to do is inside of this, I'm going to create an animator controller and I'm going to call it Ethan. And what I can do now is assign this to Ethan as Ethan's animator controller. And if I were to select this, double click on it, we get this. Now this is what we're gonna check out in the next lesson, guys. A lot of fun stuff we're gonna be able to do here. My name is Austin and I will see you in the next lesson.